Living the life. In the UK, there are over a million children who are affected by speech disorders and speech difficulties, but with some help from speech therapists, they're given the tools to deal with their communication difficulties, okay. and that is where our next guest comes in. She's a certified speech therapist and a voice pathologist. Please welcome to the show Shafa Hassan. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome, Slam. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure. Uh, it's you. wonderful to have you, a fully certified speech therapist and voice um, pathologist. Yes. What is uh, a voice pathologist? A voice pathologist basically is a specialist in communication difficulties, which are, of, which the voice uh, basically is everything which is produced from the uh, larynx upwards. Uh -huh. And um, a voice pathologist is a specialist in that area. Um, you know, basically anything which is speech related, pr prosody related, uh -huh. and um, yeah, just a specialist in the speech therapy area. So you, the type of children that you would be helping would be perhaps children with cleft palates, so born with cleft palates, etc. Um, explain to us what type of children you tell. Um, as yeah. a speech therapist, you're working with children who have speech, language, communication difficulties. Across the board. Right? Across the yeah, board, across okay. the range. Not just children, we're looking at adults and children. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, when it comes to uh, what you're talking about, voice, we mm -hmm. basically specialize further in an area of our interest. So okay. I basically trained further in the Royal National Throat, Nose and Ear Hospital in yeah. central London. Mm -hmm. Wow. And no, um, no. training in that area we were working with specialist ENT consultants uh -huh. who help you identify what can possibly go wrong with the voice for example you have puberphonic Pu puberphonism is basically when a guy's uh, voice doesn't break properly uh -huh. right, and so okay. or a girl's mm -hmm. voice doesn't develop appropriately uh -huh. to the high frequencies right pitches and um, yeah so so anything which is uh, which is a difficulty which which disturbs a person is not normal voice mm -hmm. perceived by the person. Mm -hmm. um, we are there to help them. Oh, that's fantastic! That and amazing, it's yeah. brilliant because as an as an actor or like you know somebody and you'll know this obviously, uh, mm -hmm. Afsana, because you're here, you're an actress. Uh, mm -hmm. They teach you to breathe and speak from your diaphragm. Yeah, you know, yes. so you're supposed mm -hmm. to project and things like that. Yes. But I guess you're dealing with people who have like a much lower. I mean, their their ability to communicate is on a much lower scale. Yeah, there are different mm -hmm. etiologies, different reasons why a person has a speech impediment, uh -huh. a communication mm -hmm. impediment. It's not just it's not just tied down just to a voice difficulty. Mm -hmm. For example, when you're talking about children, yeah. um, by the age of three years old, if they're not speaking properly, um, a, a parent should follow their gut, gut feeling, gut yeah. instinct, and approach a GP or approach a speech therapist, mm -hmm. because at three years old, you mm -hmm. have a kid going, why is this, why is this? Yeah. You know, they're, yeah. they're stringing words together sure. so you have mm -hmm. sentences. And if that's not happening, then I would strongly advise, you know, the parents, the carers, mm -hmm. to look into health services. So, uh, for example, then in that scenario, what what would you do as a, a speech pathologist? What what kind of uh, exercises or what I do basically? Investigations um, would you do? Because I'm because I'm a private therapist, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I usually have parents who contact me directly mm -hmm. and they approach me. And um, my game plan normally is that I do an assessment. I identify which areas. Um, for example, the first sounds p, b, m, t, d. Mm -hmm. If a child doesn't develop those right. Um, then I address those um, with articulation activities, different different direct indirect speech um, therapy programs, customized depending on how the child comes out with their speech. Um, yeah. No, that's brilliant. I mean, yeah. that's fascinating. I'm just thinking uh, because of the community, especially within the Muslim community, there's so many children who are kind of grow up bilingual, right? Yes. So, yeah. I mean, I know I was growing up with like four or five languages yeah. actually around yeah. me, and there's people. This isn't something that's unusual now of within course. the Muslim community. People grow up with, you know, Arabic, with Urdu, with Bengali, with yeah. Punjabi, all these languages. Does that have any kind of impact on somebody's speech pathology? It's, it's a brilliant question that you're asking because because our community, the Muslim community, I mean, not not stigmatizing any particular group, but um, um, parents are often very scared and worried to point out or to step forward and say, my yeah. child has a problem, can mm -hmm. you help? Because they don't like labeling. Mm -hmm. um, Asian communities are terrified that, oh my God, if something's wrong with sure. my child. The stigma. Yeah, yeah the stigma. Yeah. It's, it's awful. And, um, uh, you know, being on the show, I think it's a perfect platform to reach out to those parents and mm -hmm. just say, that, don't be scared. Reach out. Help is available. Mm -hmm. It's not a bad thing because help is there. It is treatable. Yeah. And Absolutely. Um, that's pretty. Really, I mean, that's a really important message. Well, I think. That, that if your children, true. if your child has a problem, or even indeed you have a problem, you've got to you, know, yeah. you take steps to yeah. c correct it. And there's no shame in that. Absolutely not. Uh, and I think this is. 
ask. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. If in doubt, ask. I mean, mm. how much of an issue is this in our community? I mean, I'm just curious because you know, uh, you know, Hunter, obviously you've got kids and things like yeah. that, yeah. and you know, I have so, so many friends and family, and it's something I don't hear about. And I imagine how much of that is to do with the stigma. Mm. Sure. But how much of an issue? Uh, I mean, from just it's, what you've it's encountered. It's significant. It's quite significant. I mean, I I just like to give you an example so that people yeah, can course. relate, relate yeah. to it. Um, yeah. For example, you and I living in the West, living mm. in England, for example, we kid get colds what how many times in the winter we have a cold yes. weather oh, yeah. 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 yeah cold runny nose yeah. blocked ears oh, headaches God, yeah. mm. adults mm -hmm. and children what do mm -hmm. adults do we have our medication and mm. we overcome and forget it but when it comes to little kids often they have um, liquid in their ears which doesn't clear away mm -hmm. and um, from zero to five years children are acquiring sound and language and um, oh, so, okay. if if you have an ear blocked mm -hmm. Children are not acquiring language. By the time they're five, they're not speaking properly. And if adults don't pick up on that mm -hmm. and identify it, we have a problem. And that is the time when children have developed. Mm. So if they miss the developmental you know, milestones, uh -huh. that's when you need a speech therapist and you need to be aware Something of that. Something as simple as uh, getting your ear blocked. And yeah. just getting your child's ear. Yeah. 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 Ear syringed. Um, well, yeah, yeah. checked out. At, at a later yeah. stage, you possibly yeah. need it to be syringed if you don't mm. pick up on the fact that they're having hearing difficulties, sure. which is affecting well, the Hence language. the program that runs in hospitals and, yes. and schools where yes. they, they um, test children's uh, sound. Oh, fantastic. Uh, how, they, how they pick up frequency That high-pitched thing that the doctor yeah. used to do. I used to hate <laughs> that. We were talking uh, a little bit more about speech uh, therapy and I was just thinking like yeah. what got you into it like what makes one think I want to be a speech therapist. It's intriguing. Yeah. yeah. Please. <laughs> I'm glad you asked me. I'm glad you asked because um, when I was uh, deciding which university course to take mm -hmm. or whatnot, we always think doctor, but no, or become a doctor yeah. or, or what? It's become automatic, a nurse isn't or it? Oh, automatically. Yeah. Yeah. Doctor, mm -hmm. lawyer, doctor, yes, lawyer. Exactly. Yeah, Those yeah. are the career. Mm -hmm. you know, My parents were thrilled when I said stand-up <laughs> comedian. They were very happy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with that choice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I was very, very glad because I, I wanted to help people. I wanted to be in healthcare, mm -hmm. and um, when I came across speech uh, sciences at UCL, mm -hmm. I thought let's let's go for this and I enjoyed the course because you were learning how to help people and and speech and communication difficulties like we were talking mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. um, people are becoming more aware to that and especially when it's you you don't look at yourself or adults are like whatever mm. you have a problem you're not concerned but when it comes to your child the first thing you are you want to help you want to find out what resources available what professionals mm -hmm. available and if we as speech therapists as as healthcare professionals mm -hmm. as a team if we are able to help overcome any communication barrier which a child faces as they grow up then you know why not so hence speech therapy um presents itself and um, and um, you know training doing my masters after that in voice it was yeah. further um, uh, enlightening it mm -hmm. further um, you know broadened my horizons and I'm able to help a wide group of people yeah. so and that's what um, you wanted to do mashallah yeah. you know you wanted to help people and that's what you're doing yes. mashallah it's a wonderful so, thing now if people want to find you. out you know more about your stuff people want to yeah. get in touch maybe get some advice learn. is there somewhere yeah. Yeah, learn yeah. something Absolutely. about it how Absolutely. can they get in touch I would love to be able to reach out to anybody um, you can get hold of me through a, a, a multitude of, of uh, platforms um, via um, Facebook so okay. there's Let's Speak Therapy on Facebook okay. and um, I have my own website which is letspeak.co.uk mm -hmm. and um, yes yeah, so if you just go on Google and um, hopefully fingers crossed mm -hmm. you know uh, Google my name uh, you should be able to come onto LinkedIn Facebook my web page and you know please do get in touch even if it's just to find out um, you know simple answers mm -hmm. because I would like to be um, you know, a, a helpline. Yeah, maybe, if possible. maybe people yeah, can help others. You yeah, know, yeah. Why not? absolutely. Thank Fortunately, you. we're out of time. We a are. massive thank you once again to our guests, Afsana Deruye and Shafat Hassan. Uh, and of course, to all of you at home for watching. Don't mm -hmm. forget, you can stay with us on Twitter at Islam Channel. Mm. Hashtag LTL. Yeah, or hashtag. if you want to watch us again, and why wouldn't you? Of watch course, us again yeah. on <laughs> youtube.com slash Islam Channel TV. Letting the Life will be back tomorrow, inshallah, at 7 p.m. for our final show of the week. Mm. But until then, Islam As alaikum. <laughs>